Hi, I'm Georgie and this is my mum, Sarah. We're two multi-creatives based in rural Victoria, Australia. We have an atelier ceramic studio, Hope & Co, in a mid-century renovated garage. We make, paint, write and capture. And now we're taking you on our creative trails. Over our YouTube hiatus, Mum and I completed some massive wholesale orders and finally had some much needed time away from the studio. While we love our work, we also needed to regain some balance in our lives and feed our other creative needs. During this time, Mum has set up her beautiful painting studio at the farm ahead of some exciting commissions and new works. The farm is so beautiful in autumn. Whenever this time of the year comes around, I feel creatively reinvigorated. Different colours begin to flow through me and I'm filled with all sorts of ideas. I love the rich caramel, pastel yellow, brown, red, copper and burnt orange in the landscape. It's incredibly peaceful to just come here and be surrounded by the space and beauty. Day is long, singing your song, knowing that I'll always be the safety net below you. Ooh, no, you don't have to do this alone. Hold, hold, and let go. Hi, everyone. I'm going to take you through my studio today. Come on in. Welcome everyone into my studio. Today is a little bit of a look-see where I paint. Uh, as opposed to our pottery studio, I have a studio on the farm. Now, it's a little bit different to our first video where you saw me mixing a few paint colours. Um, I've actually kicked my husband out of here, kicked my office out of here, and I now have a purpose-built space just for painting, which is I'm very, very lucky to have. So I want to share it with you and show you a bit of how we set it up. Okay, so a little bit of background first. I have been painting for as long as I can remember. Uh, I've been artistic all my life, but in fact, I think I really started painting in about the year 2000 when I started painting big canvases and they were pretty basic when I look back on them now, but I was painting them um, because I couldn't really afford expensive art for my own walls and that's how it all really began. I also found art really therapeutic um, at a time when I really needed to have a creative outlet. So this farm studio is ideal in so many ways because I've got a lot of space. As I said earlier, I've actually now created a dedicated space and I think I wanted to show you a little bit about how the studio functions but also a studio space should in theory be a place where you can escape where you can relax and that means bringing a little bit of personality into it which is why I have a number of different things on my shelves little items that I've collected over time things that mean something to me um, it's not just about paintbrushes and canvases and paper and pencils it's also about creating a space that is great for you you personally to create and that's what we're aiming to do okay so disclaimer first none of the products in this YouTube video uh, have at paid advertising. These are just products that I like to use and I'm happy to recommend them based on my experience. I primarily work as an acrylic artist uh, and I, but I do have some oils and I do like working in oils. Uh, the main reason I don't paint in oils, for two, well actually two reasons. One is I'm an asthmatic and I find acrylics are a lot kinder to my lungs and B, I'm really impatient and oils as you know, or most of you would know, take a long time to dry. Um, acrylics are much more immediate and I can get a finished result faster. So first of all I'm going to show you a couple of my favourite oil paint samples. So these are three brands that I really love. These are great because they go in that 
pumping thing, and I can't remember for the life of me what you call it, but the same thing that you would apply a spec filler or anything. Um, someone can help me out in the comments below. The paint um, is dispensed that way, and it's great if you're painting larger canvases because there's quite a lot of paint in there. Um, secondly, I love Liquin, fine detail. If you're doing fine work, this is a fantastic product. Liquin's a, a, an industry standard, really. And, and Gamblin, I love their mediums. And also Langridge, which is a Melbourne-based company, Australian company, uh, love their gloss varnish. And I sometimes use their gloss varnish over uh, my acrylic paintings. A polyurethane varnish or an oil-based varnish gives uh, acrylics a glossy look, which is the one thing I miss about acrylics because they dry flat unless you have a medium. So on to my acrylics. Now, I really have used all sorts of products over you know, 20 years of artistic practice. Among my favorites are Golden, uh, also Liquitex, which is this brand here. I absolutely love their titanium white. I love their heavy body acrylics in their tubes. I also use Structural Matisse, uh, have for years, and I still love their products. I use their polyurethane varnish to varnish my paintings, but I have found an acrylic varnish by Liquitex, which is fantastic, non-yellowing. That's the one problem with some of the oil-based ones. They do yellow over time. Okay, so the other brand that I love is a French um, paint called Chanvin, and I absolutely love it because it has a beautiful, luscious quality to it. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive than some of the other brands. The reason why I love it is that it's luscious and it's gorgeous to work with, but I often interchange it with sample pots from Bunnings. Now, a lot of purists might be you know, disgusted by me saying that. But look, it's an acrylic paint and it works really well if you're working on large canvases because you get a lot of paint for your buck. You can put any of the acrylic mediums, like impasto mediums, anything you want with them, and they respond in exactly the same way. I've never had a problem. Okay, the other paint brand that I use quite a lot of because it is available locally for me is Montmartre and I use well, their watercolour papers, I use their canvases, I particularly love their premium canvases, They're very, look, I've had no problems with them. Uh, so don't be afraid of mixing and matching, it's the same old thing, you can buy some basics um, that are less expensive and if you really want to treat yourself later on, if you can afford it, then you can go into more expensive paints. The most important thing is what you put on it and what you you create yourself so don't be afraid of mixing and matching I still do it after 20 years okay so when it comes to brushes there are so many brands available it's really up to you you're best to go into an art shop uh, or somewhere and feel them um, I think this is the litmus test for me the way a brush feels is something that an artist gets over time and you'll know when it's a good quality brush and when it's not. Um, most acrylic brushes now are fantastic and last a long time and I use a lot of those rather than sable brushes. Um, there are different shapes. Now if you're interested in how to use each of these brushes, we are in the middle of creating some really exciting content for you. Uh, so we'll keep you posted. Uh, but in the meantime, just know this, your brushes are very important. And secondly, the effect that you get from using different brushes can make or break a painting. So my five tips for starting your own home studio. Number one, create a space for yourself. Now I know I'm really fortunate having a shed that we've converted and I have a really large space, but you can do it in a little corner in a, in a room. Depending on the sort of size of the work that you create, you could be doing it on your kitchen table. But if you can create a small space somewhere away from the humdrum of life, that'd be fantastic. Uh, create that special space where you can get into your zone and start work. Number two, don't be put off by the cost. You can do things really inexpensively. You can actually buy some art products and supplies for next to nothing. So, for instance, you can buy a canvas for $6. You can buy a set of brushes for maybe 6 to $8. You can buy some paints for probably $5 all prices Australian at this stage, sorry. Um, but you can buy some tubes of paint for four to six dollars or get a sample pot for ten dollars and that'll go a long way. Uh, you can start by using primary colours 
red, yellow and blue and you can pretty much mix any colour of the rainbow with those. Uh, and you might need to do a bit of research on how to do that, but it's part of the playing around. You could buy some little canvas uh, boards for next to nothing, or you could, for Australian, $13, buy a Montmartre watercolour pad and therefore you've got quite a lot of sheets in there, how many, 15, you can just get started. In addition to palette, uh, disposable palette pads, I love using paper plates and I also love using ice cream lids for my palettes. I don't tend to use expensive palettes because I like to start with a clean slate. Point three is gather some inspiration. I always have a pin board in my studio which has something that has inspired me. Pictures I've grabbed out of magazines, things I've seen on Instagram and I've screenshotted and just printed out. I don't ever intend to copy anything but I use some of this inspiration to start a piece and work from it. Uh, and this is something you can do too. This is something we all do every day. You see things we love and want to recreate something like it. So number four tip on if you're starting out your own home studio and you don't want to spend a lot of money. When I first started painting I was a single mum and without much budget at all. So this formed my first easel and essentially this is a nail, this is the bottom of an old table uh, with the top taken off. These are, there's a nail here and a nail there and the canvas would sit up against the wall and I could create uh, a, a larger scale painting and have it supported up off the ground. Uh, later on, I bought an easel, but I tend, you know, it's funny, I tend to use the one up against the wall probably more than I, this one's a little bit shaky. Um, I love the fact that this is solid, it doesn't move anywhere, and it didn't cost me anything. <laughs> the other thing is, as our art, art practice and business is moving along, I now buy rolls of prime canvas, which at this point in my career is perhaps not a cheap option, but the best part about this is I can choose the shape and size of, or sorry, the size of the canvas and the dimensions. And what I'll do is I'll place the canvas up on the plain wall and I'll paint it and it'll attach to the wall with tape uh, and I will paint on that surface and then bring it down. So the advantage of that is that we can scan the work much more easily for prints and then it can be stretched and popped into a frame after. Tip five. I'm a pretty messy artist as I work, but each night I wash my brushes, I clean up my workspace and I go back to my mother's adage, tidy space, tidy mind. Now, I know art is about creating, but to be honest, when you walk back in in the studio in the morning, you're gonna feel a whole lot better if it's a tidy space and you've at least put things in order. So that's my tip number five. <laughs>
On next week's episode, we're back in the pottery studio and we're going to show you how to make a slab mug. So if you're interested in that, make sure to turn on your notification bell so you're first in the know when it goes up. We would also love to hear what you want to see in future videos, so drop us a line in the comments below. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Bye.